Hi everybody, it is an honor to be here. The title of my talk is Observability Chaos Engineering with Visual Metaphors. Nice to meet you. I am Yuri Niño. I am from Colombia and I am here to speak about observability, chaos engineering and visual metaphors. I work as cloud infrastructure engineer at Google. Also, I am chaos engineer advocate in my country. You can find me in LinkedIn, Twitter and speaker deck as Yuri Niño and it is my personal web page, Jurinino at the. In the next minutes, I am going to provide definitions for three concepts, observability, visualization, and chaos, of course. In the second part, I am going to explain the classical charts and dashboards that we are using to monitor our systems. And I am going to show you several witnesses of these charts. With this context, I am going to explore another point of view, I am talking about software visualization with metaphors. Finally, I am presenting the results of a survey that I applied among some colleagues. With this survey, I try to see the effectiveness of the classical charts and dashboards. And I try to identify the visual, if the visual metaphors could be useful for improving the observability of our software systems. So uh, let me start. But before that, uh, let me tell you a story. As I have mentioned, I am Colombian. People say many things about my country, such as we grow a delicious coffee or that we have beautiful landscapes. But there is another awesome thing about my country, the Royal Botanical Expedition to New Granada. It took place between 1783 and 1816 in Colombia, Ecuador, Panama, Venezuela, Peru, and the north of Brazil. The expedition was headed by José Celestino Mutis, a botanist, madmashan, and illustrator. José Celestino Mutis is recognized because during 25 years, documented the flora and fauna to the New Granada, using more than 20,000 drawings. He is José Celestino Mutis. His illustrations are a visual treasure of the flora and fauna of our country and the best visualization of the Royal Botanical Expedition. Probably many of you are asking why am I speaking about the illustration of plants and insects in a software conference. The answer is because humans are highly visual creatures, and probably it was one of the reasons for José Celestino Mutis to draw more than 5,000 flowers and insects. According to our research, the half of the human brain is directly or indirectly devoted for processing visual information. In the brain, for example, neurons devoted to visual processing take up about 30% as compared with 8% for touching and just 3% for here. In this investigation, scientists affirm that at least 65% of people are visual learners. The results show also that presentations using visual aids were found uh, to the 43%, more persuasive than unaided, un unaided presentations. In our context, visualizations, charts, and graphics are super important. Here, you are seeing the timeline of an incident during an outage into a software release. It was taken from the book Incident Management Operations, a really good book, I recommend it. Uh, this first instruction for the, from the command manager was to check the analytics dashboard, but the access to the dashboard was not working either. So let me now review some definitions that we should have clear before trying to learn about observability and chaos engineering. Observability is being able to fully understand to our, uh, of our systems. In control theory, for example, observability is defined as a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of it external outputs. For me, observability is about asking questions, providing answers, and building knowledge about our systems. Here, another important definition. Um, for the modern software systems, observability is not about mathematical equations. It is about how people interact with and try to understand the complex systems. Observability is different of monitoring and it is super important to understand why. 
According to the Google SI book, monitoring is about collecting, processing, aggregating, and displaying real-time quantitative data about a system. There are many reasons to monitor a system, including uh, analyzing long trends. For example, monitor how big is my database and how fast it is growing. Alerting, that is very common if something is broken. For example, somebody should be notified to fix it. Building dashboards, um, as you saw in the incident timeline slide, dashboard, dashboards answer basic questions about our services. And they are our first tool to try to understand what is happening. We monitor our system through the signals that they are sending. These signals are called metrics here. A metric is a single number with tags optionally appended for grouping and searching, such as query cons, error cons, processing times, and server lifetimes. According to JSON English, data visualization is a more general concept because it involves designing and engineering a human computer interface to allow a better human cognition and analyzing of metrics like data streams and archive data. Finally, a dashboard is an application, usually web-based, that provides a summary view of a services for metrics. A dashboard may have um, filters and selectors with the objective to expose the metrics most important to the users. Since this talk is about graphics, dashboards, visualizations, and observability, I put those definitions in this sketch note. Remember, observability is being able to fully understand a system health monitoring and analyzing metrics. Monitoring is about collecting, processing, aggregating, and displaying real-time real metrics of a system. Metric, an important term here, is a single number with tags optional, optionally appended, such as query calls, processing times, and several lifetimes. times. Visualization is about in, involved this involves designing and engineering a human in computer interface or metric dashboard to allow human cognition, for example. Dashboard is an application that provides a summary view of a set of metrics about a system. And finally, I would like to introduce a new concept here, chaos. Remember, this talk is about observability, but it is about a chaos engineering not so. Chaos is a state of, of turbulence in a system causing consequence and are unpredictable and random. So what is the relation between observability and chaos engineering? According to the website Principle of Chaos that contains a manifesto for chaos engineers, chaos engineering is the discipline of experimenting on our systems in order to build confidence in the system's capability to face turbulent conditions in production. Chaos engineering and observability are closely connected. According to, uh, according to me, both, concept, both concepts can be related using this expression. Chaos engineering is the sum of chaos, observability, and resilience. Because to confidently execute a chaos experiment, observability must detect when the system is normal and how it deviates uh, from that steady state as the experiment's method is, is, is executed. In this expression, it is, there is an important, an important concept uh, I am talking about knowledge, specifically chaos plus, plus observability give us the parts uh, for defining knowledge in this context. If we identify that something is not normal with our system and we are able to determine how our system will respond to a chaotic situation, we could say that we know the system. Precisely, knowledge is the concept that connects um, these two concepts, chaos engineering and observability. Take a look at this definition for observability. Observability, observability uh, can be defined as the sum of metrics plus questions plus answers. Remember my definition uh, for observability. Observability is about having tools for making the proper questions and providing the correct acts, answers. So uh, in this definition, the concept of knowledge is present again, considering that if you know the answers for these questions, you know the system. 
Uh, here, a summary of that I was trying to explain. Both concepts are complementary and they are bridged by an important concept, knowledge. In this sense, chaos engineering is leveraged by observability since uh, it allows to detect a deviation from the steady state of a system. And observability is, is leveraged by chaos engineering since um, it helps to help, it helps to discover and overcome the weaknesses of the system. Let me focus on, on observability again. I would like to share this. Observability fits on the signals that, uh, that a system emits that provides the raw data about the system's behavior. Observability is limited by the signals and the quality of the signals that a system puts out. I am talking about the four golden signals, latency, saturation, traffic, and errors. Let me remember a short definition for everyone using this beautiful sketch note from Denise Yu. Latency is defined as the time that takes to, to service a request. It is a symptom of degraded performance in a system in an incident, for example. Traffic is a measure of how much demand is being placed on the system. Some examples include the number of the HTTP requests, sessions, and errors. Errors um, are the rate of requests that fails. For example, HTTP 500 um, errors. And finally, saturation is about the utilization of the resource. For example, the utilization of the CPU or the memory RAM. A question here, how are we seeing those signals? Here, a visualization of a set of dashboards in Google Cloud Platform that are showing the behavior of a system. Here, I have a question for you. How many of you see chaos here? Remember, chaos is a deviation of the normal state of a system. In my case, I see a problem in the dashboard QPS per region. Although the chart line is the most common visualization for this type of, the in of the incidents, it is confusing because according to the title, we are seeing a, a counter of queries. But the y-axis maps times in seconds. It is important to mention that if we don't use the proper colors, legends, and variables in the axes, one of the most simple could be transformed um, in one of the most confusing charts. Another common chart is the bar chart. A bar chart is a graph that represents categorical data with rectangular bars with heights and lengths proportional to the values that they represent. The challenge is the same. If we don't use the proper categories, the chart could be confusing. Considering those, the limit, considering those limitations, what about visualization? They are the proper charts to visualize the chaos. Did you remember that this talk is about chaos engineering also? I am going to introduce a new definition here, visual metaphor. Visual metaphors are mappings from concepts and objects of the simulated application domain to a system and of similarities and analogies. A computer metaphor is considered that the, is considered the basic idea of assimilation between interactive visual objects and model objects of the application domain. Some examples include maps, series, geometric scenes, a uh, series illustrated here with a beautiful map. The series metaphor is a popular method of visualizing properties of a program code. Many projects have employed this metaphor to visualize properties of software repositories, for example. Existing research has used series to visualize packages, classes, and size of to cyclomatic uh, complexities. And I am going to show you uh, more details in the next slide. Uh, here, for example, we have a metaphor, for uh, a city metaphor for showing the properties of uh, software systems. And in this case, a city metaphor represents Java packages as neighborhoods, Java classes as buildings, and dimensions as uh, classes properties, or cyclomatic complexities. 
with the intention to identify the perception of engineering teams involved in a software operation, involved in software operation activities. This, um, I applied a study consisted of a specific questions about an incident in which two visualizations were provided. One with a traditional chart, for example, line charts or bar plots, and another view with uh, using visual metaphors. For each, visual, for, for each situation, the value of each type of visualization was analyzed. 28 of uh, them were surveyed uh, regarding traditional dashboards and visual metaphors. Specifically, they were asked about an incident in four categories or golden metrics. Remember, errors, latency, traffic, and saturation. And uh, were visualized using classical dashboards versus visual metaphors. Their backgrounds, uh, the, the backgrounds of the participants were distributed among back-end, front-end, and full-stack engineers, software architects, data engineers, and site reliability engineers. The most participations come from back-end development engineers, as it is illustrated here. The first question was about the saturation signal. Basically, two dashboards were used here, a line chart and, C, and a CD metaphor for asking about the state of five microservices. Uh, microservice uh, authentication, microservice patients, microservice payments, microservice medications, and microservice appointments. These microservices were part of a fictional healthcare system. Specifically, the question was, using this traditional land chart, which, my, which microservice was impacted? Here, each series represents the utilization of CPU by each microservice. For example, the orange line represents the utilization of the payments microservice. Uh, the correct answer for this question was uh, microservice authentication, but as you see, the answer is confusing since there is not clear which line and colors represent uh, each microservice. Probably this line chart was confusing for our participants since the answer was distributed among several options. Just the 55% selected the correct answer. Remember, the correct answer is microservice authentication. See the slide uh, orange in the pipe. In the, in the pipe. Uh, on the other side, it is curious like the 11.1% of participants choose payments, a service that effectively um, had a high consume, but in the previous day, days, not for now. I asked the same question, but now using a visual CD metaphor. I use a building to represent each microservice. For example, a pharmacy represents the medications microservice. And I use a silhouettes of people to map the level of saturation. I mean, the number of person is proportional with the utilization of the CPU. Finally, I use the red color to represent an alert and another word, in another words, in the saturate, if the saturation is higher than a value, the building is painted in order. As you see, the visual metaphor was more useful uh, than the traditional dashboard. Uh, dashboard. All participants agreed that the microservice impacted by a high utilization of CPU was authentication. Although it is not an strong proof of, for my hypothesis, uh, there is a fact that colors, shapes, and size change the perception of the participants. The open answer of some participants confirmed that I am seeing, and that I am saying. For example, the first one says that the C metaphor was very useful to see the current state of the CPU, although they claim that the C metaphor didn't show the behavior through the time. About the error signals, the second, the second golden uh, signal, um, a classical bar chart and a tree map were used to ask the participants to calculate the average of errors of, uh, for each microservice as it is illustrated here. If you calculate the average, you can see that the correct answer was, a po was microservice appointments. And although some participants didn't show it, many of them changed their answer when they used the visual metaphor. This figure illustrates that I am, that I am, that I am talking. Uh, which was selected or just by three eight percent of the participants. It is very curious that uh, eight eight 
percent, 88% of the participants think that the current answer is authentication, just for having more notes, but not necessarily um, has more errors. With a tree map, the distribution of percentage uh, changes, but the majority continue thinking that the current answer is authentication. Here, a summary of that I am talking uh, with a visualization for or the distribution of answers for traditional metaphor, for traditional dashboard, for visual metaphor and the correct answer. It is interesting because it allows to conclude that visual metaphors are not a guarantee that we are interpreting those data in a proper way. If you see the just in the in the second case using a visual metaphor, just the 30 to one person choose the correct answer. Regarding to regarding traffic signals, a classical bar chart and geometric metaphor were used for asking the participants to which the three third party service there is more traffic. In this case, the interaction, the interaction between the original B microservices and the new four three third party services. A service LDAP, service government, service assurance, and service authentication was analyzed. That they are external or third party services that interact with our microservices. Uh, this figure shows this integration using a bar plot and geometric metaphor. In the metaphor, the circles uh, represent the services and microservices and the lines that are connecting the relation among them. In spite of having lines and size for representing the connection and the traffic load among these microservices and third party services, the, the metaphor was confusing for the participants, as you see here. It is possible that the size of the circle could be associated with at least percentage of the service uh, LDAP, that is the correct answer, uh, in which is represented by the green portion in the pipe. Finally, the most people answered the, that the metaphors were more useful. That is illustrated here. Uh, as you see, the majority choose the choose visual metaphors uh, in order to get better results. And finally, uh, I would like to share these uh, key takeaway points. For modern software systems, observability is not about mathematical equations. It is about how people interact with and try to understand their complex systems. And a second important point here is considering that chaos engineering and observability involve humans and their individual interpretations. Designers of dashboards can bias those interpretations. In this sense, uh, visual metaphors are not a guarantee that we are interpreting um, this data in a proper way. Finally, it is important to keep in our minds observability fits on the signals that a system emits and that provides the raw data about the behavior of the system. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for uh, hearing this talk. And I hope that this information is, uh, are, is useful for you. Uh, remember, you can find me in LinkedIn, Twitter, and Speaker Deck as Yuri Nino, and that is my personal web page, Yuri Nino at Deck. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with that uh, investigation into a journey of visualizations and how that can change what truth looks like, right? This is, are people able to identify where the problem lies is a really important thing that should just be obvious. It should be a correct answer and it's not depending on how it's displayed. I think <laughs> it'd be really interesting to hear from you about why you decided to explore this strategy around different visual metaphors when visualizing incidents. How did you get started with this? Uh, great, thank you. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for having me here. That is, a, that is an honor to be here. And thank you, thank you for the attendance, for, um, for, for, for hearing about this presentation. So regarding your questions, why I decided to explore this strategy, because in my experience, chaos engineering, observability, and visualizations involve humans, as I as mentioned in my presentation. So I did individual in presentation. It is a fact that the designers of dashboards can bias those interpretations. So that is my main motivation for this, for, for this study, the bias. The bias is the main topic here. 
since classical dashboards uh, can lead to bias, I was wondering that if we have an alternative uh, option to explore our dashboards, it could be high, highly valuable for, for our operator systems, software engineers, cloud engineers. So, although that, I thought that dashboards uh, based on visual metaphors uh, can provide more useful data that, than classical visualizations. However, after the study uh, that I shared, I discovered that both the strategies ha have the same risk. Because, uh, for example, when I was when I was showing uh, the third study related to the geometric metaphor, the participants were confusing uh, were, were confused with, with when the metaphor with the metaphor. So, uh, for for me, the the main um, motivation is related to bias. But uh, with the study with this study and this uh, while I was preparing, in this presentation, I discovered that both the strategies and any strategies uh, could be biased because we are interacting with humans. So that is really challenging for uh, dash dashboards uh, designers. Yeah, I've, I've heard a saying before that there's there's lying and then there's statistics, right? And it's this the the kind of joke behind that saying is that depending on what frame and what lens you put on statistics, it can it can really show the bias of what you want people to see. What are the what are the things you're showing? And so exploring how what has been traditional about our visualizations and what that turns into bias is important because we may be not as aware of the biases we're building in because this is just how it's always been done. And this is really important. Yeah. We also have a question here that's just popped in uh, asking you if you think that the perception of understanding could be evaluated to improve the visual metaphor dashboards. Uh, the first question in the chat. OK, do you think the perception understanding could be evaluated to improve? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that I, 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 I agree with uh, with Diego because uh, that is an input for for us that is an input for us as designer the perception of the human so probably we we can provide more strategies and more metaphors and uh, th that cover more perceptions but that is a fact we have a limitation here that is the interpretations experience and backgrounds of the readers of dashboards but effectively I think the, the perception understanding, we have some frameworks in the literature in order to analyze this, percep this perception. So uh, in order to get the best of inputs, inputs for designing uh, more strategies, because at this moment we are limited to line charts and bar charts, that is, a, that is the, the, the charts available in the cloud providers, for example. Although um, some tools specialize in observability and and monitoring uh, have uh, have more strategies to monitor our systems but that is a fact we have a lot of possibilities and and at this moment we have um, few strategies uh, for 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 monitoring but we have a lot of universe of metaphors and so although some of them can be related to the business as in my study related to healthcare i use buildings related to healthcare hospital pharmacies medication buildings so uh, yeah that is a great opportunity to create uh, many tools and many and and share our thoughts about about this topic so often it's that cat and mouse game of the tools exist so people start using them more and then the tools are encouraged to to become broader and affect more things but you know, it's hard to get started without those tools. So do you have any suggestions of tools to create the visualizations that you did? So specifically that city visualization, how would you suggest other people get started with that? Yeah, but, but uh, for for my study, I designed the dash, I designed the metaphors uh, for this case, and I use uh, common, uh, common tools to design and to provide the, the, the three maps. But, uh, yeah, uh, there are uh, there are um, there are some tools in the market, but for example, the city there, there is a tool that visualization is B3D. 
So I am going to share the link in the, in the Slack in one moment, because uh, as a result of an, a paper that I published in the past, I, I create a tool that provides some visualizations. But these visualizations are focused in, the, in, in visualizing software, in visualizing the characteristics of the software. But specifically for monitoring, I don't have uh, tools or not in my knowledge, tools in the market, but I am going to share with you some tools that could be extended or used for here. But that is, a, I have to recognize that for this study, I draw the, the circles and lines in order to prove my, my perception about this topic. A, fa a fast feedback loop there. Yeah, but, but thank you. As uh, I've said before, please do join us in the QCon uh, Slack if you're not already there, and, and you'll be able to get access to this this great ideas and uh, and tools that Yuri will, will share with us. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to share a link for a tool named SB3D. Great. I think there's a, another really good question here, and I might even extend it a bit. So the question here is, how important is color when you're looking at these visual metaphors? And I would maybe extend this to ask as well about how you deal with accessibility when color is kind of a big part of what you were trying to show at times with red versus green and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The color is really important. The color is, 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 is very important. Here, because, for example, in my metaphor with the hospital, I use the red color. So when you see a red, a red part or a red section in your dashboard, you, that, that takes your attention immediately because we are familiar with this, um, with this, with this, um, with these colors. A red, green, red rep represents a fire, represents an alert, and green represents that that is what. So that is that is really important to use the proper colors. So, for example, in the in the third metaphor, when I am when I was using the geocentric metaphor, because that is really curious for me, because I I was expecting that this metaphor could be used could be more valuable for our participants, but this was uh, confusing because I use uh, the same colors. I use blue and gray. And, and I don't use, for example, uh, the red or, or, or green colors. I, I try to use the size and shapes in this case. And it was, confu I, it was confusing for our participants. So I think the color is really important and it's really important to use in a, in a familiar way for humans because in our understanding, in our experience, red color, for example, it represents alert. So I should take advantage of that. Yeah, it makes sense that for a large part of the population, that is the first thing we look at, right? I am I am privileged in that I do not have any color blindness. I look at red. I grew up in a culture where red means kind of stop or bad or or error. And so that, that fits well for me. But how do you think the industry can take on board making this, making that that geometric shape and size that you tried to use in this in the last example more common for people so that it therefore makes it more accessible and less dependent on color which is something which you know may or may not work for everybody uh due to you know color blindness and other other aspects yeah 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 that is a fact also considering the accessibility uh, things. That is a that is a great opportunity. So I am thinking that at, at this moment that is a great opportunity to to run another experiment because uh, probably we are ignoring there are some other persons with 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 this challenge to access our tools. So we need to consider the standards for uh, for accessibility for accessibility for them. Uh, presently, this, this morning I was reading a study published by InfoQ related to this topic with, uh, with, a ten, with ten guidelines to build uh, applications that are accessible for our users. So I think uh, we can uh, design an experiment for this, but I didn't consider that this topic in in the study that is uh, that is that is a fact but i think that is um, that is really interesting to explore this yeah. uh, this this consideration also yeah there's just so many angles right you have to try and tackle a um, lot of them and and 
one side we definitely want to include is accessibility. And there's so many others, though, that you were able to get insight into during the study, which was really interesting. One thing uh, that, yeah, I, I realized this was a great question that came in around the animation, because everything that you showed us was kind of static, even the arrows that had kind of motion in them in the sense that they were pointing in a direction, they were just stationary arrows. Have you thought about adding animation or movement to your visualizations? Yeah, it could be great. It could be great if we have this opportunity because we could have more variables for showing the situation or the state mm. of a system. But in this case, it is important to consider that if we have more, if we have a lot of variables and a lot of things in the same dashboard, could be uh, confusing also. Because, for example, when you have movement, you you can to this you can distract with these movements in the dashboard. So uh, it is it is a really good idea for a dashboard, but we have we need to consider that is a risk. Considering that, for example, if you have a dashboard with a with a with a fast movement in the dashboard, and we and you have the proper the proper dashboard in this section of the, of your page with a with a with with a the static situation, uh, probably you can distract with the other uh, with the other dashboard. So this is important to consider that. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the lack of movements. Yeah, in in this case, we we have. Uh, I, I am reading the chat at the yeah. moment, so <laughs> yeah, that is a that is an interesting discussion for this topic because uh, the movement can provide a lot of more information for us and and it could be high valuable for our readers. But I need in the same case I need to run experiments and I need to go to the users in order to understand. Them. So I think probably a user experience expert could be could be valuable or could be very useful for for us here. So I think if, if we need to explore all or all, all options uh, in order to provide uh, the proper visualization for our users. So that is a great opportunity for industry and academy. Yeah, that is important for academy that considering that we we have for example people uh, 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 studying these topics related to visualization related to human factors related to accessibility it is a great uh, topic for a phd thesis for example I, I am i am i don't know but there is a great opportunity to explore these topics uh, in a in an academy also the, uh, absolutely also yeah, you mentioned there a really interesting kind of lever to pull on, which is the number of uh, kind of criteria that you can use, right? When you add color or shape or motion, these are all kind of ways in which you can describe different attributes. And when as you add more attributes, it, it can get more confusing. And so I was just curious, like you seemed almost a bit surprised by some of the the study results of that that things were confusing for people, uh, and you didn't get the kind of results you were expecting. What do you think maybe caused some of that surprise or those unexpected results? Yeah, I I'm sorry, I can hear you uh, the last part, but the question is related with the with the with the what what, what results were not expected. Yeah, you 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 seem to be surprised by some of the results. Uh, what do you yeah, what yeah, do you yeah. think caused that uh, that difference in expectation? Yeah, probably in the in the third study in the third study uh, related to traffic signals, a classical a bar chart and a geometric uh, because that was really surprising so, for me uh, considering that i was expecting that the circles and line could be provide more information for the for the users but it was the, the 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 reality was another another reality so um regarding to the traffic signals the traffic signals that was surprising for me so in the metaphor, the circles represent the services and the microservices represents the, the, the relation between the third party services. In spite of having lines and size, I think my problem with this metaphor was related to the color because I didn't use the proper colors here. So in the other case, for this, this, this kind of incident, this kind of chaos, probably the lines and charts and the simplicity 
it could be more useful for for the attendant so uh, but i think in a conclusion i think the main cause is related to the humans is related to the to our perceptions of the of the systems because each of us is a unique universe with different experience with different backgrounds so i know the main the, the main root cause for this confusing uh, was related to the background for example because when i explore with details the answers i find i found that the back the back end software engineers same similar perceptions and the front end engineers same similar perceptions that are different for example, uh, of the cloud uh, infrastructure engineers or persons who work in the in the operations of, of operations uh, topics in an engineering team. So I think the background experience knowledge is the main cause, and that is the challenge for who are designing this type of uh, dashboards. Well, that is a challenge, and and it makes sense though that what you're used to seeing every day you make kind of assumptions or or you start to read in so i remember when you know for example the three bars meaning like open up a, a side sidebar in an app became new but now it's become something that people are aware of and and that can kind of start to build like a repertoire but yeah when you're dealing with such a broad broad base, back end, front end operations, all of that, that can be really hard. Yeah. So do you yeah, think yeah. that these kind of new visual metaphors are something that can be brought into the industry in the future, uh, despite all these challenges around different backgrounds and, and all those kinds of things? Yeah, but I hope that it, it will be useful for them. I hope that we, in the future, we have the possibility to interact with our cloud using metaphors it could be great uh, i think it could be great for us and it, it is it is valuable considering the uh, the open answers for our participants so uh, i think the visualization of chaos and, and specifically of incidents on productions represents several challenge for industry and academy i would like to open uh, this this uh, this gate this this gate and this uh, this universe of the metaphors for our industry providers. So, for example, uh, some cloud providers. I I don't want to mention specific uh, pro cloud providers, but uh, some of them are working, for example, in tree maps and heap maps in order to provide more strategies for our um, operator systems. So they are working on that. But at this moment, we, do, we don't have the possibility, for, for example, to use a city metaphor or, or geocentric metaphor. Because considering that, for example, those, two, those metaphors are related to the business, are related to the organization, and related to the, the proper and specific uh, business, uh, business, business topic. But I think that, for example, we could provide tools for building these uh, metaphors for providing these metaphors providing a, i don't know a tools that allow us to draw or to provide or to design our dashboards in order to relate to 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 to, to connect our business our preoccupations our priorities with our uh, dashboards so uh, if we have the possibility to design the dashboards in our cloud provider it could be great uh, and it could it could generate value value for for our operator system so i think that that is challenging but that is an open gate for uh, creating uh, as things as our imagination uh, allows us as you say, we, we have to bring industry and academia together to like solve these problems. And what's really exciting is if the cloud providers do start working in this space, they operate at such a scale that we can start to really get feedback into academia and start to actually run studies at scale and, and get feedback on that. So that'd be a very exciting uh, a opportunity for the industry. So. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you so much again for this. It's, it's been an amazing time learning about your study and 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 where you're going to go with that next and and how this all works. So we've still got some time to have a chat with you in our uh, Hangouts area. So if you are an attendee, I hope you've joined us in Slack where you can keep asking questions um, 
as we go forward in an asynchronous way, but we also have this opportunity to join Jiri here in a Zoom chat for the next uh, 15 or so minutes. And so uh, you can go ahead to the top of the screen if you see Hangouts, that will take you through to that Zoom chat. And I hope to see you there. Great. Thank you Great. so much. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for you. That's such an honor for me to, for, for being here. I really appreciate your, your attention and the attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and for allow me share this experience with you. I hope that this, uh, it could be a helpful or valuable for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And I am going to the Hangouts. Fantastic. Bye. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.